Right, one of the dumbest arguments we ever got into was we were watching a basketball game and in the third quarter, LeBron James had missed a dunk. He looked over at me and he goes, ha, LeBron James sucks. <laughs> I don't know how much you all know about LeBron James, but LeBron James got drafted out of high school at 17 years old. He was the number one overall pick in the NBA draft. He signed a $95 million contract with Nike, three-time NBA champion, four-time league MVP, youngest player to score 35,000 points ever. My friend Daryl has failed his driver's test four times. Four whole times. Daryl sucks, okay? Yeah. Yep. I didn't even know you got to take the test four times. I thought after you failed the second time, they were like, hey, you know what? Here's a $50 Uber credit. You don't get to drive anymore. <laughs> You're a danger to society. I do believe in being positive, man. You gotta look on the right side. I actually did live in a wheelchair for a long time, but I tried to be positive then too. Like I tried that wheelchair basketball. I was horrible. <laughs> Everybody else goes down on a fast break and I'm just going in circles. <laughs> <laughs> but you gotta stick with it, Pilgrim, because eventually I started beating every one of those guys, you know, once I learned to walk again. <laughs> Defense. <laughs> No, I didn't really do that, you know, but I did volunteer to be the ref, right? They didn't let me. Apparently I was too one-sided, huh? <laughs> All right, about the sports. I played sports. I wanted them to play sports too. I know y'all are thinking, you sissy thing, you did not, but I played basketball. <laughs> Thank you. I need that. Um, it was the early 80s when I played, and uh, I had really big hair. I used to hot roll my hair to play ball. <laughs> we all did. Okay, so, and I am from such a little bitty farming community, and it's 500 people in Middle Tennessee, and we didn't know what waterproof mascara was. So by the end of my games, I looked like Say if Tammy Wynette and Alice Cooper had a child together. <laughs> I was a forward. Sometimes I had to be the center if Mary Dallin had to take her baby to the health department. Yeah, I've had so much fun with you guys. You guys are wonderful people. This is his dream come true to get to come do comedy for people like you guys. It's going well, and I'm thankful that this, this dream's working out then better than my previous dream uh, all throughout my whole life. Uh, my dream was to play in the NBA, and... <laughs> that wasn't a joke, that was for real. I'm pouring my heart out to you people. I know why you're laughing, so let's just talk about it. There's not a lot of five foot five guys like me in professional basketball. Here's the, you know, everybody wants to make fun of the short guy until your kids won't come down from the play place. Then we're everybody's best friend. <laughs> oh, little Gavin won't come down, will he? <laughs> the same Gavin you were offering me his old clothes a second ago. Okay. I was watching this young lady be interviewed on TV the other day on some show, and they were interviewing her because she came up with this machine. Young lady, 24 years old, and she came up with this machine, and what it did is it filtered dirty water into clean drinking water quickly and cheaply. It looked like a little plastic box, and they've sent these things all over the world to these poor countries, and they said because of her invention, they saved thousands of lives. And they said, how'd you come up with this idea? And she's like, oh, I was just on my couch daydreaming, and it came to me. What? That is incredible that she could come up with something like that just on her couch because that it, it made me feel terrible because the other day I was on my couch and for two hours I thought to myself how many people would have to die before I was the greatest basketball player on earth <laughs> I 
I gave that serious thought for two hours. <laughs> at the end of the two hours, I concluded that, uh, you know, it'd be a lot. <laughs> like, there'd be so many dead people at that point that, you know, it wouldn't even be fun to be the best basketball player on earth. Because <laughs> no one would care, you know, because of the tragedy. I mean, no one would care about it. I'd be like, hey, you guys want to get a game? They're like, no, Brenda, we're trying to rebuild. Maybe she pick up a shovel and help us with this rebuild. <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't know anything about shovels or building, but you just let me know if you need any help getting buckets. Because <laughs> I'm the best. I'm the best that's left. I want to, uh, I like to see a jazz game while I'm here. Maybe someone give me some jazz tickets. Anybody uh, basketball fans out there? You know, I like professional basketball because those athletes are the least in contact with reality. <laughs> I like when a seven foot tall player dunks the basketball, no one's guarding him, he starts celebrating like he did something special. <laughs> you are seven foot tall, sir. That's the same skill level as me flushing a toilet. <laughs> I mean, I feel good about a nice flush, but I walk away, I keep it cool. I let my stats speak for themselves. Well, you know, I played, of course I played. No grade school basketball teams complete without a tall, gangly, uncoordinated crybaby. <laughs> yeah. Hey coach, it's me, Johnny. You wanna put me in? No? Good eye, coach. <laughs> Good eye. I don't know how it worked at your school. At my school, you had to try out for the, the team you wanted to be on. You know, they had different levels of teams. Everybody wanted to be on the A team. A team had all the cool kids, all the star athletes, right? Then there was the B team. B team had a couple kids in wheelchairs, a bunch of blind kids, kid without a head. Yeah, he was blind too. I was on the C team. Our team name was Johnny and Phil. <laughs> I wasn't even a starter. <laughs> so I got to name my son, and uh, I've always been a big fan of Michael Jordan. Huge fan, watched all his games growing up, right? Had the Air Jordan sneakers. In fact, these are the uh, retro 11 bread low Air Jordans. Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Pretty cool. Anyway, uh, so my son's name is Basketball Shoe. <laughs> The kids got it too easy, that's the problem. Too easy! When I mean two, not the word two, but the number two, too easy! Because they got that two-parent love. Two-parent love is overrated, I'm sorry to say that. It is. I know it's great to have both parents, but not when you're trying to raise an athlete. Because my kids are pretty good in basketball, but they never work on their game because they got that two-parent love. They come home, they got air conditioning, heating, covered full of food, video games. Like, why don't you guys go outside and work on your game? It's too hot out there, Dad. It's comfortable in here. <laughs> Meanwhile, that single-parent kid who doesn't know who his father is hates his home life. <laughs> Mother's always yelling at him, he's always hungry, so he's never at home. Instead, he's at the park working on his game six hours a day, and he is going to destroy my kids. <laughs> this is why I grabbed my kids and told them, this is why I'm leaving your mom. <laughs> They're crying, why are you leaving us? Because you won't practice. I don't know what else to do. <laughs> my hands are tied. Maybe if you see me every other weekend, you get your act together. <laughs> anyway, so I grew up in this small town in Northern California, and not a very diverse town. I know you can't imagine that here, but... Uh, <laughs> yeah. Don't look around. I was... Um, <laughs> I was the only Caucasian in an all-white neighborhood growing up, so I know... I know how it can be. It can be tough. We wanted to play pickup basketball, but all we had were referees. It was difficult, and I'm not saying it was easy. 
We walk out of the restaurant. You're not going to believe it. A Black Lives Matter rally broke out right there. I didn't even know it was a rally that day. I had no clue. I was unprepared. I didn't get an email. I'm like, oh, man, I'm not, I'm not ready for the rally. <laughs> Me and my free dog are walking through the rally. I, I looked at him. I was like, hey, you biting anybody at this rally? Back to the green mile you go. <laughs> so we're walking through. And uh, a Black Lives Matter rally is always interested in Utah, by the way, because there are never any black people there. Um, it's white people on my behalf. I had no idea y'all took up the cause. <laughs> <It was> like, <laughs> Protesting on behalf of people that will never be here. It's a nice move. I walked in, it was like I was a celebrity. It was, oh my gosh, is that Carl Malone? <laughs> yes, it is Carl Malone. And uh, I am the mailman. I started signing autographs. I'm like, mailman, 32, yeah. I didn't want to, you know, let these native people down. You know what I mean? Not, not everybody gets to meet their hero. So I started signing autographs. I saw a white dude do a backflip. I'm like, oh my goodness. What part of the struggle is that? He walked up, Black Lives Matter, bro. Bah, 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 hit me with two finger guns. Black Lives Matter, bro. I'm like, you, you almost hypothetically killed me, dog. <laughs> that is the most offended I've been all day. I'm Carl Malone, respect me. <laughs> I'm walking through. I wanted to play professional basketball. <laughs> That's not the joke. I'm, I'm from North Carolina, so I went, I went to school on a place called Tobacco Road. I'm a North Carolina State Wolfpack graduate, so I went to a pretty big basketball area as a kid, and, and growing up, that's all I wanted to do. And I know I don't look, I played up high school basketball. That's the only impression I do on my show, 16. Me on the high school basketball team. This is me, 1991, high school basketball team, me. <laughs> high school basketball team, ready, go. That's a ball game. <laughs> oh man. I, uh, I did play basketball, played college basketball. We got any basketball fans? There we go. Yeah, I played, uh, I was, uh, full disclosure, I was a walk on, which means I had front row seats and matching jerseys. But, uh, <laughs> had some good stats though while I was on the team. Had some good stats. CPM. Claps per minute. Good job, guys. <laughs> oh, man, I wish I could jump. <laughs> like, uh, I was on the team for a year and a half, so for a year and a half, my name was Seth, with an F. Because uh, that's how black guys say Seth for some reason. <laughs> Didn't know what to make of that. I was talking to one of my teammates one day, and he's just like, man, nah, Seth, you a thug. I'm like, hold on. You just said thug, that has a TH in it. <laughs> that means you could say my name right this whole time, you just choose not to for some reason. He's just like, man, shut up, Seth. <laughs> Talk to me like that on my birthday. I'm cool with it. I'm cool with it. But the, the downside of getting older is that you, you, get a point, you get to a point where you realize your mind and body aren't always on the same page. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. That's where I'm at now. You know what I'm saying? And that's a hard place for dudes to be. I was playing basketball. I went to block a shot because my mind <laughs> said, Ty, go block that shot. You can block that shot. Went to block the shot. My body was like, hey! Where are you going? <laughs> you didn't check with us about blocking a shot. <laughs> what we can do is let you twist the an ankle and uh, hyperventilate. We got you covered on that. Because I play ball with these 20 year olds and I don't know why it's dumb, it's dumb. Because first of all, the motivation of a 20 year old in the gym, way different than mine way different than mine. They walk in the gym, they working on being the next LeBron. They working on being the next Kobe. I'm working on my cholesterol. 
I had a donut last night, bro. That's all. I'm just trying to work it off. That's all it is. I'm trying to sweat it out, dude. Ain't trying to, ain't trying to win no championships in here, okay? And the recovery time. Recovery time of a 20-year-old, miraculous. Miraculous. They could twist an ankle, put a piece of gum on it, and be cool. <laughs> one kid last week broke his arm, broke his arm, ripped it off, grew another one. <laughs> I'm like, same tattoo and everything? And one thing I wish I knew before I had kids was uh, parental peer pressure. Because we get tricked into doing stuff we don't have to do. I got tricked into coaching my kid's second grade basketball team. Nobody wants that job. Nobody wants that job. If there's a guy who's like, I'll do it, I'll do it. I'm just saying, double check and make sure that that guy brought a kid, okay? I was doing that for 10 weeks. This guy came up to me, he's like, hey coach, uh, I'm Aiden's dad and uh, we got a problem. I'm like, yeah man, we do have a problem. Cause I had no idea there was a kid named Aiden on this team. <laughs> I didn't learn any of their names. I learned a very important lesson though. I learned that every 90 year old guy with his pants up to his armpits, <laughs> that guy just coached too many youth sports. Cause I showed up, every single father had their shirt tucked in. I'm talking polo, tank top, camo. I'm like, oh, is this the dress code for fatherhood? Okay. Is this what authority looks like to a second grader? Here we go, look at me, I'm in charge. And next thing you know, I'm walking back and forth with all these other dads like, hey buddy, tie your shoes. Tie your shoes, come on man, come on. crazy old man, these kids wouldn't listen to me because my belt loops were touching my nipples. <laughs> my wife has a friend that's really fashionable. And she was like, hey, you've lost some weight. You should, uh, you should wear some tighter pants. I'm like, not on stage, I shouldn't. Uh... <laughs> uh, yeah, man, that getting older sneaks up on you though, right? I, uh, I had a wake up call for how old I am recently. I was playing pickup basketball at a park and these young guys showed up. One of them bumps into me. My whole life, somebody bumps into me in sports. They're like, my bad, you good? You good? This young guy bumped into me and he's like, sir, are you all right? <laughs> it's like, man, I'm sir, are you all right old? I had no idea. <laughs> Worst part was, I was not all right at all. <laughs> I was limping out of that park like, yeah, it'll be okay later, someday, probably, maybe. I don't know, my wife's got ointments, we'll figure it out. <laughs> but if you follow sports, you know that there's a lot more white coaches than black coaches, even though a lot more professional athletes are black than white, and it's finally changing, finally improving. And people always said it's racism, it's prejudice, that's why there's so many more white coaches for so long, as opposed to black coaches. And it's not racism or prejudice, the reason for so many more white coaches for so long is because growing up as a white athlete, we spend a lot more time on the sidelines than black athletes. <laughs> So that by the time we retire, it's like, oh yeah, I've seen the game from this perspective. Yeah. I know exactly what I'm looking at. Yeah, he's gonna come around, he comes under, I've been over here my whole life. Oh, yeah. Look at my footprints from childhood. <laughs> you know? uh, age five, seven, nine, 11, 13. Uh, I've never even been on that side. What's it like over there? Oh, my ankle. Oh, okay. Oh, oh, oh okay, my ankle. <laughs> white coaches know how to win with less black coaches sometimes have expectations that are too high right those who can't teach those who can can't teach michael jordan could never coach basketball he'd be like come on guys why is nobody dunking from the free throw line all right <laughs> these are fundamentals we talk about this every day in practice just jump over all five guys every time <laughs> Jump up there, stay up there. You know, there's nothing going on down here. Win six championships in eight years, play a second professional sport, get your own shoe and clothing line, star in a movie with Bugs Bunny. Come on. It's a pyramid of success. I don't get it with you guys, right? Played baseball growing up. Did you know that the dimensions to a baseball field are just whatever? 
It's completely true. Every major league baseball field is different. The infield's always the same, 90 feet to each base. But the outfield fence, they just make it up. <laughs> this is 100% true. To hit a home run in Fenway Park, Boston Red Sox have got to hit that ball 302 feet. Houston Astros, on the other hand, Minute Maid Park, they have to hit the ball 436 feet. That's a 45% difference. <laughs> and no one ever talks about it. Like maybe there's a reason why the Red Sox have been to 13 World Series. <laughs> and the Astros were swept in one. It's like, hey guys, there's no rule. Move in your fence. Make it easier on yourselves. 45% difference. Can you imagine if any other sport just decided to start doing that? There'd be an uproar, right? You see that excited NBA coach? Hey, great news, guys. We're playing in Chicago this week. The rims, they're only five and a half feet tall. And I think about our wedding day all the time to this day. I'll never forget it. I was up at the altar, you know, everybody's looking at me. I was wearing this. <laughs> Church doors open up. There she is, the most beautiful I've ever seen her. And she makes her way all the way up to the altar. And she gets this close to my face. And she whispers to me something I'll never forget. She says, Why aren't you crying? Excuse me? Why aren't you crying? I'm happy? No, happiest day of our life. Friends, family, Jesus, we're all here, so. Can we talk about this any other time than right now? If this was the happiest day of your life, you'd be crying. I'm starting to tear up a little bit right now. You know, from the fear in my bones and the knowledge I'm about to sign a life contract with what I'm finding out to be an emotional dictator. I have a flight response right now, but you're kind of in the way. We fast forward a few years and the Cleveland Cavaliers win the 2016 NBA Championship, bringing my city of Cleveland its first title in 975,000 years. And I am crying my eyes out. I am inconsolable. I'm saying outrageous things. Things like, this is the literal best day of my life. <laughs> or, I will never be as happy as I am right now in this moment. <laughs> and what other time in my life was ever this happy? <laughs> nothing, nothing comes to mind. Total blank. And that's when I feel a cold stare right here. <laughs> it's her. She's angry. She says, best day of your life. Huh? I said, you're right, it is, it is the best day of my life. LeBron James averaged a triple-double through seven games. Do you have any idea how hard that is to do? Why aren't you crying? <laughs> and that's what true love is, ladies and gentlemen. 
Don't start, don't start now, don't start now. Don't fake it. <laughs>